These women are battling for life, not just their own, but the lives of everyone watching as well. Some of these ladies have battles that are very personal. Coach KL says no matter who they are fighting for, everyone here is a winner in the battle of breast cancer awareness. It was just an opportunity to make a difference for us to do our part in raising money for research and creating an awareness and in educating people and also celebrating survivors. The Hoops for Hope basketball game raises money for the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation, which promotes research to find a cure for breast cancer. This was the second year of the fundraising game, which included informational brochures, art, and of course a game. North Carolina State coach Kay Yao is known for her ability to find victory on the court with NC State, as well as Olympic gold medal winning Team USA. She is also a breast cancer survivor. Well, I was first diagnosed in 1987. At that time, I went through a mastectomy. Uh, I, you know, it took a while to recover. Uh, it's much less recovery time these days. It took a little bit longer then. When Coach Yao finished her treatment in 1987, there were few options available other than a mastectomy to help prevent further occurrences of breast cancer. She felt she was done with the cancer. 17 years later, uh, I was diagnosed with a reoccurrence of breast cancer, the same area, the right chest wall. And um, this time uh, I did a lot of uh, nutritional, spiritual uh, treatment, um, always spiritual treatment. I will be 37, um, so I was diagnosed pretty much at 25, 25 years old. Chelsea Gibbs discovered a lump in her breast during self-examination, but due to her young age, she didn't think she had cancer. After almost a year of monitoring the size of the lump, she finally consulted a doctor about it. Chelsea's life changed when the nurse came in to talk to her. She had a completely different look on her face than all the other times that I had been, you know, to see the surgeon or whatever. And, you know, she came in, she held my hand, and the doctor walked straight in the door. And, you know, he's like, you know, you have breast cancer now. And I just, I, th I heard him. I know I heard him. And it was just, just disbelief. Now married and with her daughter Kieran, Chelsea volunteers her time to talk to other women going through breast cancer and promoting awareness of what to look for and what to do to identify breast cancer. Gibbs stresses self-breast exams, yearly mammograms for women either over 45 or much sooner if they have a family member who has had breast cancer. And most of all, she says, you need to be aware of your body. And don't be afraid to ask your doctor about any changes in and on your body. How you handle it is going to depend is going to write out how you go forward if you um, take it in and say okay either I don't have time to deal with this you're not going to be successful if you say um, I'm scared I don't want to deal with this you know put your head in the sand um, you're not going to be successful I thought it was something that would go away and so I just kind of thought ignored it. Marilyn Roundtree walked out to center court at halftime with Chelsea and many other women who share the same challenge. They all have had breast cancer. At the time it was as though the wind had been knocked out of me. With her husband beside her and friends stopping by to just say hello I'm thinking about you. Marilyn fought and made it through her treatment. Today she is a survivor of over nine years. The Hoops for Hope game is not only a celebration for Marilyn and all of the women who are survivors but it also provides inspiration. There was a lady that had 21 years that she was a survivor, and that was encouraging to me. And another lady came up to me and she said, you're encouraging to me because you've had almost nine years. So we're all there supporting each other. There is uh, something about, um, there is a sisterhood to, to this disease. While Marilyn and NC State play on the court, breast cancer information is being distributed throughout the hallways of Reynolds Coliseum. Daryl McGuire greets survivors she is meeting for the first time as if she's known them forever. There were arms that went around me when I found out of people that I did not know, of telephone calls from people who had just heard or possibly knew and that they had been through it and I didn't know who they were but gave me maybe a one sentence advice um, or just to say I'm thinking about you, I care about you, if you need me, give me a call. When Daryl found out she had breast cancer, a friend of hers didn't know what to do or say to her. Daryl says many times it's hard to know what to say or do, 
and it can even be up to the survivor to initiate the response. I had a dear, dear friend who did not call me for six weeks. She did not know what to say. And I saw her at the grocery store. I put my arms around her before she put her arms around me. And just to let her know that I was okay, that I was still that human being, that I was still. So there was just a few little changes, but to give her the satisfaction and the comfort to know that it was okay. And it was her, okay for her to cry or not know what to say. The game winds down, but the battle rages on. For the survivors in the stands and the women you have met, the fight to find a cure is coupled with the importance of awareness. They stress that women need to be aware of their bodies and the importance of self-breast exams, yearly mammograms, and talking to their doctor about any questions they have. Coach Yao reminds the crowd that they are not alone in this fight. All the people here who are survivors, who are battling cancer right now, I just hope you feel an energy, uh, a hope, and just a renewed determination. People see faces of all different types of people to know, okay, one, I'm not the only one. Two, this person is surviving well also. And three, that person is just like me. You know, she's uh, she was a 25-year-old, you know, college graduate. This was a, you know, 45-year-old mom or, you know, or a 50-year-old basketball coach, you know. So many di different types of people that got to see that one event. There is life after it. There is hope. There's a lot of, lot of uh, medical advances going on that I didn't even have back uh, in nine years ago. And so there is so much hope and not to give up and never give up.